Hi, in a previous video I explained how you could use a cheap radio control transmitter along with a receiver unit like this to remote control up to six channels of analog input on an Arduino. Now, in that previous example I was limited to six channels partly because um, even though on the face of it this transmitter has 10 input controls, the firmware installed by default actually only broadcasts any six of them. And then on the receiver side, I was also limited because I was using these PWM output wires. Now these are normally designed to go to servo motors on a drone or car, um, but I was using them as inputs into an Arduino, and there's only six of them on the receiver unit. Now, in this video, I'd like to explain how you can actually send all 10 of the input controls on the, on the transmitter unit, so um, upgrading the firmware on the transmitter to start with, and also changing the receiver end slightly. So I'm using a, a different receiver unit here. This is the FSIA6B, which is the upgraded version of the FSIA6, and crucially, uh, as well as still having the six PWM outputs here, this also has something called an iBus interface. So this is a serial data connection interface that can actually have up to 14 channels transmitted through it. And because it's a serial connection, I also only need one wire to connect it to the Arduino. Um, if I now turn on my serial monitor and my transmitter unit here, and now you'll be able to see I can separately control those output channels. So that's the first channel, second channel, I've got the third channel, the fourth channel, and then across the top I've got all my switches, my variable dials, and I've got 10 separately controllable channels which you could really use to control uh, any aspect of your Arduino sketch at all. So here's what you need to do. So to upgrade the transmitter unit, we're going to flash some new firmware to it. And the way to do that is via the trainer socket, which is located on the back of the transmitter unit here. Now, it is possible to buy a um, dedicated kind of lead that goes from your PC to the trainer socket, but actually there's no need if you're just going to use it for a one-off um, flash upgrade like this. You can simply use an Arduino instead. So um, what you need to do is to set your Arduino up so it kind of works as a pass-through for any serial signals sent to it. You just want to pass them straight onto the transmit and receive pins instead. Uh, so to do that, you put a 2.2 ohm resistor between receive and ground, and you also connect reset and ground here. Um, now, it's absolutely fine to do this on a breadboard because, like I say, this is just a one-off thing that we're going to do just to flash the firmware. So don't worry too much about making this a, a neat connection. Um, with those two things connected, we also connect the ground line to this outside metal sleeve that's going around the outside of the um, trainer socket here. Um, I'm just using jumper wires and just kind of pushing them into that slot there and uh, you connect the Arduino transmit pin, so this TX here. This goes to pin 3, which is at the bottom left as you look at it, and the Arduino reset pin goes to pin 4, which is here, and you can leave uh, 1 and 2 disconnected. So that's set up the um, transmitter ready to have uh, to be flashed. And then you can run this um, flashing software, or I'll provide the, the link to it, um, so it's a very small, just executable file, and all you do is select the COM port that the Arduino is plugged into. So the Arduino here is plugged in via USB. Select the COM port that that USB is connected to, and then uh, open that port and click the program button. And you'll get the, uh, the little update here just to show that the new firmware has been installed. And once you've done that, your transmitter is now ready to broadcast all 10 channels. So now you can uh, disconnect your Arduino from the trainer socket, that's all done. And when you now turn your controller on, uh, what you need to do is assign which input you want to go to which channel. So we'll go to Function Setup, down to Auxiliary Channels, and you can see there I've got channels 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. These will all be accessible over the IBUS interface. And I've just mapped them in order across the top from switch A, B, the variables um, A and B, and then C and D on this side. And on the receiver side, the rewiring becomes much more straightforward, in fact. So, as before, we've got the 
5 volt line and the ground line going to the receiver module but now um, we have just a single signal line um, which you can see goes in right at the top right hand corner here to this socket and I've got that wired to digital pin 8 on the Arduino um, so this is what's going to be the serial connection that's going to carry uh, all of the input channels as a, as a single data packet. I'm using pin 8 because I'm going to read that packet of data using the Altsoft serial library. Um, this is a replacement library to the conventional Arduino software serial library. It is a bit faster, it's a bit more robust, but it is limited to which pins it uses. Um, so uh, that is specific to use digital pin 8 there for the signal line to the iBus interface. And finally, we just have to make a few modifications to the code. So um, rather than reading each of the individual input pins relating to each channel separately, we're now reading them as one serial data interface. So I'm including one new library, which is going to help us do that. Um, this will all be included as part of the, the download code. But other than that, uh, we still have the same number of input channels as we did before. We can define however many output channels we want those to map to. And as in my last video, I've defined various different uh, behaviors which map the logic of those input channels to those output channels. Um, so I'm using, like I say, an Altsoft serial interface, and I'm also declaring a, an object called FlySky iBus, um, which is going to use that interface there. In the setup function, I'm going to begin um, a connection at 115,000 board rate and I'm going to begin the iBus interface using that serial connection as well. Uh, the rest of this all relates to um, the PWM controller so if you wanted to use this to control servo motors in an animatronic project let's say. And then in the loop function here, so like I say we can't simply read separate GPIO pins. Instead what we're going to call is the iBus loop function. That's provided by that library at the top of the code and it's going to read the data packet, separate it out into different channels and do all the processing on it. So we have to manually call the loop function each frame to be able to retrieve the latest data from the iBus interface. And then we use this iBus.read channel function here. That's going to provide the separate uh, readings for each channel that's been interpreted by the library. So we'll assign that to channel input i and from then on it's exactly the same as we have done in the previous example. We'll apply whatever logic we want based on those inputs and then we'll set the outputs that have been determined uh, which will move the, the motors uh, accordingly, things like that.